Good morning, kids! Welcome to another day of our class. It is another day of fun and learning. I am Teacher Frel, your teacher in English 3, Quarter 4, Week 5. Milk Base Our lesson for today is about informational text. So kids, are you ready to listen? Let's get started! At the end of this lesson, you are expected to Restate facts from informational text on climate change, children's rights, traffic safety, etc. Listen to Hello kids! Today, we are going to study about informational text. What is informational text? Informational texts are factual information about specific topics that are conveyed to the readers in different forms. Authors of informational texts employ a variety of structures to assist readers in finding information quickly and efficiently. Let us read the passage about road safety. Road safety is the protection and prevention of road accidents by following all the road safety measures. It is very important to know the traffic lights and signals. Traffic lights and signals for pedestrians should be observed. Red man lights means do not cross. If you see it, you should not walk. Green man light means you are safe to cross the pedestrian and you can walk. In traffic signals, Red means stop. When the signal turns red, all vehicles have to stop. Green means go. When the signal turns green, vehicles should move. Yellow means slow down. When the signal turns yellow, vehicles should slow down. Here are some examples of restated text from the selection. Number 1. Knowledge about traffic lights and signals are very important. Number 2. Traffic lights are red, green, and yellow. Number 3. Red means stop, green means go, and yellow means slow down. Number 4. Road safety should always be observed by all to prevent from any accident and harm. And number 5. It will serve as protection for all of us if we follow this all the time. Now for our learning task 1. Fill in the bubble map with the restated facts about the child's right from the informational text below. Do you know your rights? Every child has rights. As an important part of the society, you should be loved and taken care of. As a child, you should know and value your rights. The first right that you should know is the right to be born and be given a name. It is also your right to become a part of a family that will love and take care of you. Your family should provide your needs such as clothing, foods, and shelter. You should also be protected from danger. It is also your right to be educated. Now that you know your rights, do you enjoy these rights? And now, let's fill in the bubble map with children's right. The first one is the right to be born and be given a name. Another children's right is the right to become part of a family that will love and take her off. Another children's right is the right to provide your needs such as clothing, foods, and shelter. Another children's right is the right to be protected from danger. And another is the right to be educated. So these are the rights of a child like you. And now, what is about restating a fact? Restating a fact is a means of expressing or stating original ideas using your own words. In effect, it can change the structure of the sentence by either making it shorter or longer. Restating can be done in varied ways. 
Some of the ways to restate is by paraphrasing and summarizing. Restating usually draws information from an existing information or details. This is known as informational text, which is in the form of a story, a passage, an article, or a news. These informational texts are factual. And for our learning task 2, restate the cause and effect of an earthquake from the given informational text below. Why do earthquakes happen? Earthquakes usually happen when underground rock suddenly breaks along a fault. This sudden release of energy causes the seismic waves that make the ground shake. When two blocks of rock or two plates are rubbing against each other, they stick a little. They do not just slide smoothly. The rocks catch on each other. The rocks are still pushing against each other but not moving. After a while, the rocks break because of all the pressure that was built up. When rocks break, an earthquake occurs. During and after an earthquake, the plates or blocks of rocks start moving, and they continue to move until they get stuck again. The spot underground where the rock breaks is called the focus of the earthquake. The place right above the focus on top of the ground is called the epicenter of an earthquake. And now, here are the cause and effect from the given informational text. Cause number 1. Earthquakes usually happen when underground rock suddenly breaks along a fault. This sudden release of energy causes the seismic waves. And the effect is, it makes the ground shake. Cause number 2. When two blocks of rock or two plates are rubbing each other or still pushing against each other but not moving. The effect is, after a while, the rocks break. Cause number 3. When the rocks break because of all the pressure, the effect is, an earthquake occurs. For the learning task 3, Complete the dialogue of Tom and Ben about COVID-19. Refer to the given text. Write your answer in your notebook. Coronavirus disease or COVID-19 is an infectious disease transferable between humans and animals. Once infected, the virus spreads all over the body, but usually affects the respiratory system. This leads to sore throat, dry cough, and even runny nose. Other symptoms include fever, headache, and loss of taste. When most of these symptoms occur, a person should immediately consult a doctor for early treatment to prevent the virus from affecting the body. And now, here are the dialogues of Ben and Tom. Hello Ben, have you heard of COVID-19? Yes Tom, what do you know about it? COVID-19 is an infectious disease transferable between humans and animals. What body system does it highly affect? COVID-19 usually affects the respiratory system. Oh, I see. What about its symptoms? You may experience sore throat, dry cough, and runny nose. Do you know any other symptoms? Yes. You may also experience fever, headache, and loss of taste. So what should one do if these symptoms appear? A person experiencing these symptoms should immediately consult a doctor. Alright Ben, I have to go. Thank you! For the learning task 4, read the article. Restate the highlighted parts of the article. Write your answer in your notebook. Student Opinion Zoos Should Be Banned By Megan Zhu, adapted by New Zealand Stuff, published on July 16, 2020. Do you think zoos are nice places for animals to live? If you do, think again. Zoos are harmful to animals. There are three main reasons why. First, zoos breed animals inhumanely. 
Second, they do not help animals return to the wild. And third, they do not take good enough care of the animals. For these reasons, zoos should be shut down and banned or stopped altogether. The first reason zoos should be banned is that they breed captive animals. Zoos breed animals so that they will have baby animals to show the public. Most zoo animals are born inside zoos. Many are raised without ever seeing their original wild homes. When zoos have too many animals, they do not return them to the wild. They simply kill the extra animals. Take this example from 2014. The Copenhagen Zoo is located in Denmark, a country in Northern Europe. A giraffe there named Marius was raised as a baby in the zoo. He was loved by the public. Yet, when he became an adult, he was killed. The zoo staff shot him. They didn't think he would be useful. They had other male giraffes they could breed instead of Marius. Baby animals attract more visitors than older animals. Killing an adult animal opens up space and resources to bring in a younger animals. That animal can draw bigger crowds and more money. That is the real reason Marius was killed. The zoo made less money as he grew up. People were more interested in Marius when he was a baby than when he became an adult. The second reason zoos should be banned is that they rarely help endangered animals return to their original habitats. A report by National Geographic found that most zoos do not have any contact with reintroduction programs. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals or PETA is a non-profit organization that fights for animal rights. According to them, fewer than one-fifth of the animals in United States zoos are actually endangered. When animal species is endangered, it is at risk of dying out completely. Zoos spend tons of money building enclosures for animals. Yet, they do almost nothing to restore wild habitats or to stop poaching in wild environments. Finally, zoos simply do not have enough resources to properly house the creatures that live there. Wild habitats cannot be remade in spaces where animals are held captive. An opinion article called All the Reasons Why Zoos Should Be Banned was published by Vice in 2015. It said polar bears in zoos have up to 18,000 times less space than they do in the wild. Animals cannot be healthy in zoos. 75% of elephants kept in zoos are overweight according to the article. 40% of lion cubs pass away before their full lifespan. This data supports the argument that zoos do not have the resources to support the animals' well-being, health, and populations. The British Broadcasting Company, or BBC, has reported that around 3,000 to 5,000 animals are killed each year in zoos in Europe. Many more animals show signs of zoocosis. This is a psychological disorder observed in zoo animals that leads to pacing, bar biting, and other repeated behaviors. Zoos should make an effort to reintroduce the animals they own into natural habitats. Some could be returned to the wild. However, many zoo animals would not be able to survive in the wild. These animals should then be sent to sanctuaries where they can live peacefully. Zoos inhumanely source and breed animals. They do little to improve wildlife populations. Zoos also do little to help the public understand their impact on wildlife. Also, they cannot provide what is needed to support animals' lives. Zoos should reintroduce their animals into the wild or into sanctuary settings. This will have the added benefit of relieving zoos of the burden of keeping these animals alive. Isn't it that a win-win? 
Source, https double slash newsela.com slash read slash ela dash banda zeus dash student dash opinion slash id slash 2001-009-233 slash And now, let us make the restated facts from the highlighted words. So the first highlighted words is Zoos are harmful to animals. And then the restated fact is It is harmful to animals to put them in the zoo. The next highlighted words is Zoos breed animals so that they will have baby animals to show the public. Then the answer is, For them to show baby animals to the public, zoos produce animals to display to public. Another highlighted word is, A giraffe there named Marius was raised as a baby in the zoo. So the restated fact is, Marius is a giraffe that was raised by the zoo. Another highlighted words is, Baby animals attract more visitors than older animals. So the restated fact is, Visitors are attracted to baby animals than older animals. Next highlighted word is, Zoos spend tons of money building enclosures for animals. The restated fact for this is, They spend a lot of money building enclosures for animals. Another highlighted words is, Animals cannot be healthy in zoos. And the restated facts for this is, Animals can have poor health in zoos. Another highlighted words is, Zoos should make an effort to reintroduce the animals they own into natural habitats. And the restated facts for this is, Animals should be put back where into their natural habitat. Another highlighted words is, Zoos inhumanely source and breed animals. And the restated facts for this is, Animals are uncaringly sourced and breed in zoos. And now for our last task, complete the paragraph by selecting the appropriate answers from the choices below. Write your answer in your notebook. The choices are, Paraphrasing, Restating, Informational text, summarizing, structure. Let's start! Number 1. Restating is means of expressing or stating defined facts or ideas by using your own words. In effect, it can change the... Number 2. Structure of the sentence by either making it shorter or longer. It can be done in varied ways. Some of the ways to restate is by number 3, summarizing, and number 4, paraphrasing. Restating usually draws information from the already existing information or details and this is known as number 5, informational text in the form of story, passage, article, or news. So kids, are your all answers correct? Wow! Very good, kids! Kids, have you learned a lot from this lesson? Very good! So again, the topic that we have discussed today is about informational text. Kids, I hope you have learned a lot from this lesson. Until our next topic, bye-bye kids!